Welcome in, guys. Happy Friday. We've had a hectic week in the NBA. A couple of winning days uh, earlier on in the week. Tuesdays, Wednesday, winning days. Monday, winning day. And then yesterday, a uh, bit of a tough day. Boston Celtics, chance to get it done for us against Denver. They don't. Jason Tatum bricks a wide open three to take the lead in the final minute. Uh, Tatum now 0 for 6 in the final minute of game tying and winning shots this season. Just brutal. Uh, and then Miami Heat, right within the number, lands on six. We don't get the cover there for five. Had an edge on that number going in. Uh, do get a halftime winner last night. San Antonio takes care of business, helps get some of the damage control back. Still ahead on the week and a crazy weekend coming up. John, though, theme of the week, injuries, injuries, injuries. Carl Anthony Towns, Steph Curry last night. Uh, more all-stars keep on going down here as the season goes on. Wow, ex exactly. Cat's a big one. Uh First place for Minnesota. That's going to hurt the Laurel. And they were able to get it done with them last night. We'll see how they do. We'll talk more about their game tonight. Uh, Steph, that could be a huge one. We'll see what happens to Steph, although he kind of disappeared also last night at the end. Tatum, I hope my cousin Fred is watching. Uh, my cousin Fred, Boston guy, uh, been telling me for years how Tatum's a top five guy in the NBA. Yeah, when he plays the Hornets, when he plays the Pistons, uh, when he plays the Spurs – in the big games and the Denver's show up and the, and the Golden State Warriors champion, this guy's just not one of the best. So uh, three guys, um, Tatum ain't one of them. Jokic, Doncic, uh, SGA, those are your three guys for the MVP. What that, what's Doncic got now? Four straight 35-plus triple doubles. Ridiculous. Um, these are the guys that are the best basketball players in the NBA, the most valuable uh, not Jason Tatum. Uh, Jason Tatum uh, took a back seat to Jalen Brown, who they were saying was questionable yesterday. Uh, we played it. We had the feeling he was going to play. Played 37 minutes the game before, and uh, we delayed one that game went to two. But that's been the theme all week. Uh, hate to beat a dead horse, but when I've got idiots in the chat, yeah, the Lions don't mean nothing. It doesn't, uh, I can't take you guys anymore. Go fucking follow some fraud. Um we got two games this week. We beat by four and a half points. Yep. We took the, the Wizards plus nine and a half uh, against the Jazz early in the week. Um, I b believe that was for Monday. That game closed five, okay? It's a four and a half beat on the number. Jazz had to leave at four and a half minutes less. You, yep. you just can't lose these games. It's a 99% chance to cover that game. That's a 100 to one shot, and we lose that game, and then we lose another one the other night. OKC Thunder lay nine. As soon as the overnight comes out, the game runs to 13, even 13 and a half. Uh, half an 11 point lead. Simons knocks down the last three. Nobody shoots. Nobody fouls after that. The game lands eight. That's just the way it's been. I got to tell you guys, you know, you may be tired of hearing it. I've never seen a season like this. We have not done anything different from any year past. We beat the line just as we do. The only reason we haven't really destroyed the DraftKings line every day is because they've they stopped putting the line up at 12, 12 30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, some days it may be that early. Most times it's not. It's later in the day, only a handful of games. So, like we said, uh, you follow us with a DraftKings account. We will actually, we will absolutely bury their line, and we have done that. And the money just hasn't shown up. Uh, there are no reasons. There's, there's nothing we're missing. We're betting the same things all the other sharp guys are. That's what closing line value means, guys. Not that you have to win the game. You all missed the point. It's what the other sharp guys are betting. Squares are not moving the NBA lines three, four points. So if I put you on the game that the sharp guys are going to bet at a better number than they're at, and I, other than that, I don't know what else you could want me to do. And we'll just continue to do what we're doing. We bet a, bu a bunch of games yesterday. Uh, one game looks to be moving against us, which I'm shocked. We'll talk about that. But we beat the line in the other three, and we'll talk about it, Ben. So I guess let's get started. 
Yeah, guys, a lot of bets already out on this slate uh, and room for more to be added. And as always, you guys know where to go for that. Sign up on MassaEdge.com or download the app. And please like, comment, subscribe below if you guys no, want. I to give up here. with that. We're here twice a week, and we'll be here less than that if we can't get some fucking comments out of you. Yep, so make sure if you guys want us back more, you guys help us out with that. But let's talk about this slate. Top game is a dozy. Hornets at Wizards. A couple of your worst teams in the NBA. Obviously, Wizards right there with Detroit. Wizards now the worst team in the NBA. And uh, as far as the bottom three teams for that lottery, it's Wizards, uh, Pistons, and Spurs. Spurs almost had a win last night. They blew a big lead late. Uh, and then you have this Hornets team, who's that fourth team who could come in the mix if San Antonio wins enough games. And uh, I don't know, maybe Detroit or Washington don't see them too coming out of that race. Hornets, though, coming off a loss to the Magic. You have this Washington team who blew a 21-point lead in the midst of this now 16-game losing streak. They had a chance to blow it. Uh, both these teams coming off losses to Magic. It's tough to want to back Washington ever. 16 straight losses, 16 straight losses at home as well. Uh, they're the worst home team in the NBA. You have to think this is a game they have circled to snap a super long losing streak or this could go till the end of the season. Uh, so as far as that spots, more or less Washington, however, number where it was opening was says Charlotte got to be looking for the Hornets at halftime here. Wizards keep having big first halves, horrendous second half. We'll see if that trend continues to that. Yeah. I don't want nothing to do with this wizard teams. Uh, just, just playing losing basketball. Charlotte at least winning a couple of games here and there. Um, Washington also going to be without Bagley. Remember they traded big man Gafford. They'll be really small. Uh, not that Charlotte's got anybody to really take advantage. Richards is in. I guess he can do a little damage. Uh, but this game, uh, you get two of the worst teams in basketball. What Washington, who is the worst team, hasn't won in forever. Charlotte playing a little bit of better basketball. So you got a low number here. To be honest, I make it even a little lower. Not jumping out of my shoes to bet this one, though. We got the Pelicans at the Sixers. Pelicans, big win at Toronto the other night. Everyone got involved in that game. Uh, Murphy, he's been having some big games. Three of his last four games, really productive here for New Orleans. We'll see if that continues. And then you have this Philly team coming off a loss to Memphis. They're up eight at the half. They blew it. We were on Grizzlies second half, so that was a nice little winner for us in that game. Philly at home right now is just abysmal. Three and eight, one and ten against the spread. Their last eleven home games. Pelicans, they're seven and two straight up. Their last nine on the road. Uh, Got to be looking at New Orleans here, and we are. This is one of the bets we sent out yesterday, John. Yeah, we laid six and a half here. This is, this is tough. This looks like a square play. Uh, big favorite on the road. New Orleans has lost their last six trips into Philly, mm -hmm. but three, two, and one against the spread. Um, th this is just a decimated Philadelphia team. Uh, no semblance of the, the team that used to be. Uh, no Embiid, no Maxi. That's 61 points per game, not in the lineup. They've averaged, what, a buck seven in their last two games against the uh, Nets. And the Grizzlies, come on. Uh, Pelicans, now that they're all healthy, look, we've said it all year long. Grizzlies could could be up there when they're healthy. Well, mm -hmm. they are healthy right now. They've won three of their last four games by double digits. This is a game they should take advantage. Just coming off a 40-point 40, victory at uh, Toronto. Look for more uh, damage here on Philadelphia. We have Minnesota at Cleveland, Minnesota back-to-back -back after a thriller last night. Edwards, big game, 44 points. Had it a, one of the craziest blocks I've ever seen to win the game, seal it off. Uh, got really up there, hit the head on the rim. We'll see. Do him and Gobert get the night off? Played big minutes. Obviously, he had that. He said afterwards in the post-game interview, his head was hurting from hitting the rim. His wrist was hurting for how he fell. Does Edwards get a, a night off? So careful with this game. Wait for lineups, but... Minnesota or nothing. You have Struess, Mobley, and Mitchell all out for Cleveland. They played well this year, depleted, but it just kind of feels like that's kind of running out of what they had. It's starting as the season goes on more and more fatigue for everybody else. Uh, it's kind of been who can be the next man up to step up. This past week and some wins they had, Dean Wade had to step up. Sam Merrill had to step up. Uh, don't know if they can keep on getting those performances as this injury list grows. So this is a game I'm looking for Minnesota. I uh, just got to see that Edwards is in this game here. And as far as a bigger read on Minnesota, if you guys have watched this for the last year and a half, you guys have been loyal viewers. You guys know I talk about how much I want the Wolves to get rid of Carl Anthony Towns for a variety of reasons. Uh, last night was part of it. 
Edwards, without Towns, gets the ball in his hands more. Their best offensive player. He can be. He averages 26 on the season. He can be a guy that averages 32. And I think there's a better fit of a point guard that can be in there, uh, like a Trey Young, if they could trade Ken Hounds or something. So interested to see down the stretch here, maybe in the postseason, how competitive Minnesota can be without Towns. I don't think it's that much of a loss. Um, again, it's one game. Let's see it. The, the depth Fourth. is the depth is where this uh, not having Cat could hurt, and that could hurt tonight. Go bear 40 minutes last mm-hmm. night, a monster game, but they needed him every bit of that 40 minutes. I don't know if he's going to play tonight. Edwards, as Ben said. That last shot, he hits his head and hurts his wrist. Um, this could be a give-up game on a back-to-back. Minnesota, 4-5 and five against the spread on no day's rest. We'll see what it looks like. We we'll have to need these guys. Now, I hear what Ben's saying. Cleveland, re- I mean, they're real shorthanded. Uh, you're, you're talking Mitchell, Struess, and Mobley. That, 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 that's real shorthanded. Could only like Minnesota, but only if all guys are playing. I would actually make them the favorite. Yeah, and this is your uh, one and two teams in points allowed. So if it ends up that Minnesota ends up resting some guys as well, you could just be looking at a dead under game in that one. We'll have to take a look at it. Uh, you got Magic and That's Nixon. right. To, to mention, that's the top two teams in points allowed. Minnesota leading the league, Cavs second. But again, you're without Mobley, one of your top defensive players. And we have Magic at the Knicks. Magic playing terrific basketball. Eight and one, seven and two against the spread. Their last nine. They've been getting it done on the road as well. This is the best 13 game stretch, I believe. Maybe 16 game stretch of this since 2010, 2011, back in the Dwight Howard days. So uh, this is an Orlando team figuring it out. Knicks, just a complete opposite situation. Obviously, all the injuries. Brunson, he's missed the last couple. He's questionable. We'll see if he comes back. Uh, Knicks at home, brutal, 2-7, and 0-9 oh against the spread the last nine home games. And it's one of those weird matchups where is it becoming ownership? Is it still a revenge factor with this many injuries for the Knicks? Going to call it ownership for tonight, uh, Orlando. They have won and covered three of the last four trips to New York, and they have won the last four meetings overall. This seems like another opportunity for a Magic team who's rolling to take advantage of the Knicks team who's all hung up in the hospital. Two teams going in different directions. Uh, Knicks, a lot has to do with their injuries. You guys know you got Robinson, Randall, OG, all on the injured list. And now Brunson missed the last couple of games. Uh, Brunson did practice, but in a limited fashion, not a full practice yesterday. My guess is he's probably out. As I told my guys in the preview, this is a flyer. And by a flyer, I meant I took one and a half with the Magic. If Brunson's out, Magic have got to be at least three. Uh, so if that's the case, we'll stay with it. If not, I might just jump off, bet the, the, bet the Knicks get off the game because I make it more of a pick em game. So no big edge at plus one and a half. But there's no way in the world the Knicks could be one half. Even with Brunson playing, they've been absolutely horrible. Uh, if he comes back again, I wouldn't expect him to be at 100%. And then we have Hawks at Memphis. This game has our last bet we've had so far. You have this Atlanta team coming off a nice win against the shorthanded Cavs, playing better ball right now, 4-2, and two, their last six. And they hit with an injury bug. First it was Troy Young, and now it's Jalen Johnson. He's been pretty big for them on this team. Uh, been that number two guy behind Murray with Trey Young out. And you have Memphis, who continues to be shorthanded. You have Kennard doubtful, Gigi Jackson questionable, that CVS receipt list of guys already out. Uh, we'll see what they can come up with. And a bit of a letdown spot, I would assume. You have them coming off a pretty big comfort behind win against Philly. I believe they were down as much as 14 in that game, come all the way back and uh, pull it off and get the win at Philly. Now they have to come back home where they haven't been the best. Lost four straight, one and three against the spread, 12 and 19 against the spread at home this season. Uh, shorter number here, but got to take Atlanta, who's rolling and even with the injuries, could be finding themselves in the play and making a little bit of noise. Yeah, Grizzlies uh, it's just night and day on the road and home. <laughs> Opposite of last year, last year had the – the best home record in the NBA just cannot win at home. Atlanta has the worst against the spread record, both on the road and home. They can't win anywhere. Trey Young gets hurt. Last six games, they're four and two. They become more defensive minded. What are we giving up? We're giving up now 1 0. Uh, where's my stats? They're, they're 29th in the league, Atlanta, giving up 122 uh, points per game. But in the six games now with Trey Young out, at, uh, allowing just 104.7. Hmm. That, 
It's all about defense, guys. We know what Trey Young gives you offensively, but here's what he gives you defensively. Whole team is a different team. So we know what Memphis is, the worst scoring team in the NBA. I'm looking for a low-scoring game over here. Memphis can't win at home. Uh, Atlanta in that 10 spot, the, the, the final playing spot, looking to solidify that spot. Uh, I believe they come with a big game tonight. Uh, they they owe Memphis a little uh, a little, a little uh, something from a, a Grizzly win in Atlanta earlier in the year. I laid three on this game, and the game is back down to two. So if you guys are seeing this, you can actually lay a better number than me. Unless De- DeJounte Murray's out also, uh, there is no way in the world uh, that I make uh, Atlanta only two. As a matter of fact, I would press this once I get official lineups. And we have Heat at OKC. Heat back-to-back, as you guys know, last night. They just can't get that cover there against Dallas. Uh, then you have this. Thunder team, who got the win against Portland, didn't get the cover, just one and three against the spread their last four. They have been getting it done at home, though. 13 and two, 11 and four against the spread, last 15 home games. Matchup history is weird. Obviously, this OKC team has taken massive strides in the last two years. Uh, Miami, they used to more or less own this matchup. They've won six of the last seven meetings. They've won, uh, what is the last six here at OKC? Thunder, though, did get them earlier this season at Miami, and they covered the prior four. This is uh, a big number here. Tough spot, though, for Miami. It would be a lean ever so slightly to Miami, just as far as the price. They've been playing good on the road. Do they have it in them after last night's game to get up here on a back-to-back with the travel? Uh, so tough game all around. Might be one of those you want to wait till halftime, see how things look. Yeah, well, you at least want to wait and see if the, if the Heat are going to play Butler and Rogier, who've had injuries uh, seemingly all the time. Rogier came with a monster game yesterday which made losing that game even tougher. Uh, I've got a point to play off Jimmy, who's supposed to turn on in the second half. Uh, he came with basically a dud, just yep. 14 points, six turnovers. Can't get that out of Jimmy Butler and go on the road and beat the Mavs. Now they're going to have a back-to-back, go to OKC. Um, OKC, uh, not not a great road trip, but they go, what, two and two, one and three on the road. Obviously, we talked about uh, – Losing that uh, the cover against Portland, um, Thunder. They see their chance with Cat now out. They're in second place. Can take over with Minnesota if Minnesota loses tonight and they win. Uh, okay, so you look for this game, but that might. This is the type of game Spo will get them up for eight and a half. Big number. I'm, not, I'm certainly not laying it. We'll wait to see what the injury report looks like later on today. Then we have Bucks at the Lakers. Bucks brutally beat at Golden State the other night. Uh, it was just a Golden State shooting the shit out of the ball, 19 and 39 from three, 56 percent from the field. Lakers coming off a tough home loss to Sacramento, one of our winners throughout the week. Kings get it done for us in that one. Uh, I believe the stat is Anthony Davis now 0 and 9 in his career against them. So ownership there in that matchup. And really, I, I mean, I told this to John the other day. Is the Lakers issue when they have so bonus and Jokic, the two teams in the West, they really can't beat. It takes AD's effect away. He's usually really good in the pick and roll action. When you have, you know, say for example, uh, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, that pick and roll, he can help off and he can play off ball. But when it's the big man who's ball handling in the pick and roll becomes problematic, uh, and the Lakers can't defend it. So part of the problem there. What do we get from LeBron tonight? He left with an ankle injury late in that game, much similar to Steph Curry last night. Uh, is he gonna play? This Milwaukee team was firing all cylinders before that Golden State game. Maybe a little bit of a letdown after the big rally win the other night. Uh, looking for them to bounce back tonight against the former assistant, Darvin Ham and the Lakers team. Uh, it's going to be a tough one here if LeBron does not go for the Lakers. Yeah, um, this is the NBA. Uh, Clippers come into Milwaukee. Giannis sits for Milwaukee. Milwaukee comes up with a tremendous – uh, rally uh, and and beats them. They go to Golden State. Giannis plays uh, one game after Golden State getting beat by 50 at Boston, and naturally they bounce back to destroy the Bucks. This is your NBA, guys. Yeah. And tell me the guy that's got the crystal ball for it. Like I said, I'm willing to pay. I'll never do another minute of work. Uh, until that comes, I guess I'll just keep doing my work. Let's see what Giannis and, and the Bucks have going. They were playing great, as Ben said, uh, their new thing is defense. Doc Rivers is teaching defense. 
10 1 and 1 the under is in the 12 games in their last 12 games um i'll look for them to respond tonight they're playing good basketball they'll go into la look for them to respond after that ugly ugly game uh lakers look lebron is questionable every day except today he's legitimately questionable he left with the ankle. You don't want to mess up LeBron. We're getting late in the year. Could be time for give him a day off. So he's legitimately questionable. Look, LeBron's out. Bucks should be all a four and a half, five in this game. So this was a no-brainer. Uh, we took plus one yesterday. Yeah, no need for the Lakers to uh, rush back LeBron. It's not very likely they catch up to that sixth seed spot. And even right now, the way things are set, there's a chance they get ninth fed. or tenth. They're going to be ninth yep. or tenth, and they're going to be they're going to be in the play in that. That's for sure. They're you know they're, exactly. they're, they're not going to get out of there. Yep. Look, this is this is a tough part of the year. Well, this is who's coming for a game today. Um, Atlanta is coming with a game. Memphis, they may come with a game. But what's looked like is they play better on the road. They don't play. They don't show up at home. That's why we want them. Uh, New Orleans with a 40-point win, still battling. They want to stay as one of the top six teams. We expect them to come. Philly, I know, wants to come at one. We know Embiid with, with, with no Maxi. They just can't come at one. So these yeah. are the spots that we're looking here. Milwaukee uh, definitely wants to come with a game after today. I'm sure the Lakers do. But do they need to? They don't. They're they're not going. They're going to be either the ninth or tenth. Maybe they get up to eighth. But me, I'm giving LeBron as much rest as I can. Not talking about sitting him out for two, three in a row, but sit him here or there. And if there's anything wrong with the ankle, and they've been listening him questionable with the ankle every day, give the guy a day off. Yeah, I mean, even right now, the way things are shaped up, I mean, maybe it changes with a cat injury, but. If you get that six seed, you're just your reward is Denver Nuggets first round, the way things are shaped up. And I mean, no one really wants the Nuggets first round. So uh, it's not even worth that much in that extent. We'll see what ends up shaping up there with the injuries. Last game on the card Rockets at Portland. Rockets, they just blew a 20 point lead. They lose to the Clippers the other night. Uh, Clippers almost come all the way back and get the back door. How about Singoon? He had the career high 45, comes back with a monster triple double 23, 19, and 14. Uh, and Houston playing good right now, four straight covers, uh, but just one and nine, four and six against the spread last 10 on the road, and one of the worst road teams on the season. Blazers playing a bit better. Uh, they've been miserable at home, but they come back from this trip where they covered three in a row and they get the first one against OKC, which hurt us in that one. They get the cover against them. Uh, four straight covers for both teams coming into this matchup. Look at the matchup history. A little bit of Blazers. They won to cover the last four meetings. Last one was in OT. They won the last two in Portland by a combined 31 points. Uh, Rockets coming off a tough loss. I imagine they get up for this game. It's a game they can take care of business in. Portland or nobody, as bad as they are right now, it's uh, four straight covers, a little bit of matchup ownership. And Houston, there's been opportunities against these worst teams on the road this season. Kind of reminds me of Brooklyn last night against Detroit. Very short number in that game, but they've just been so bad on the road. It doesn't matter. I feel like that same situation here at Rockets at Portland. Yeah, don't don't want to have Houston laying six uh, on the road as Portland has covered their last four. And they fought OKC just to get that back to a cover. So they're still trying. They're still trying to get uh, to, 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 to keep games competitive. It's just that they, they could be decimated again tonight. We already know Brogdon is out. I think they've won two games all year without Brogdon in the lineup. Um, we've got eight now. Scoot Henderson out. Now they're saying uh, Grant, uh, Kamara, these guys are all questionable. Who's going to be in the lineup for Portland? Um, so we'll wait to see the lineup there. But, again, these are the games that if we don't really feel we have an edge, like, yeah, Houston – um, you may be coming in with a little home revenge. Portland beat them at Houston in yeah. overtime uh, earlier this year. So you would think Houston's coming in with a game. So that's why I think this number is a little bit high. Again, what motivation has Houston got? They're not catching uh, the playing spot. So they'll be ready for some games, not be ready for some. Don't know if they're ready for this one. I'll stay off this game unless there's major injury news. That's our Friday NBA slate, guys. Obviously, you guys know here Mondays and Fridays. A lot of injuries that went on throughout the week. We'll see if that continues that trend this weekend. Uh, a lot of bets out already for today, and we gave that a lot to you guys. If you guys want to be a part of the weekend, you guys know where to sign up. 
things have been heating up. A little bit of a rough day yesterday, but it's a week in the green. Week in the green last week. We'll see if we can pick that up and continue that on through the weekend, John. That's about it, guys. Um, we're off for the weekend. We're back here Monday. We'll be doing two a week. It's Monday and Friday, baseball season, right around the corner. About we're two off weeks. We're special. Um, two ninety nine is our monthly charge for a subscription. From now till baseball starts, it's one ninety nine for the month, um, and then you'll be grandfathered in at that price. Once ba- once baseball starts, we're back to two ninety nine. Guys, the best sports betting information you're going to get, bar none. You can go anywhere and get some fraud, tell you they, they hit 90% on their will. But uh, if, if you really believe it, you're a square. And you know what? You should be following them. But here's where you want to be Monday and Friday. Give us some love and we'll come back. We'd we'll love to be here every day for baseball. Got to make it worth it for us. I appreciate all you guys who do tune in, help us grow, and uh, let's make some money. Let's make some money.